Hey, I'm Randy and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we help folks find high value, hi-fi, home theater, and headphone equipment. And today, we're talking about the Ascend Acoustics CBM 170 SE. Let me check. Yeah, that's right. It's a bookshelf speaker from a company you've probably never heard of. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the Ascend Acoustics CB 170 SE. Today's sponsor is the Ohio class ballistic missile submarine coffee mug collection. That's right, collect all of them. The Nebraska, the Nevada, the Ohio, that's the one that started it all. The Alaska, there's a whole bunch to choose from. That's right, when you're drinking your morning coffee, you can rest assured that the strategic deterrence arm of the, the US military is safe, sound, and in place. Ohio class ballistic missile submarine coffee mugs. Collect all of them. The Ascend Acoustics CB Charlie Bravo 170 SE Sierra Echo. It's quite the uh, model number. Ascend Acoustics has been around for a while, I think over 20 years, and they have been selling direct to the consumer the whole time. This is probably their most, I don't think probably, this is the most affordable pair of speakers. It comes in at right around $350, 26 bucks to ship it. So really all in, out the door, you're talking about $375. The 170s have a six and a half inch woofer. Wait for it. <laughs> Sounds very low, we'll get to that later. Six and a half inch woofer, 27 millimeter soft dome tweeter, which is a fancy way of saying one inch soft dome tweeter. Has a port on the back, a small port. The finish is kind of a rough, I'm assuming to be vinyl wrap. Not the prettiest speakers in the bunch. Not gonna win a speaker beauty contest, but that doesn't matter. We don't look at, well, we do look at speakers, but most of the time we're listening to them. It's about the music that they produce. And while these are maybe arguably not as pretty as others, and while they may be an acquired taste, there is some cool, I like that little, it's a real phase plug. Yep, it doesn't move in and out. The woofer moves around it. A Little bit squatty. The grills that come with it are pretty straightforward. It's kind of like the lollipop style to where it sits inside a little receiver in there. These aren't as long as some speakers that I've seen. So I doubt these are gonna break off. So these are probably gonna do just fine. On the back one has a five-way binding posts. Pretty decent quality. Yeah, a little tight in there. Someone torqued that one on. Five-way binding post, so it can take pair wire or banana plugs. I prefer a banana plugs. Not much of a wave guide on here, just a little bit of an indention. There is some type of surround that is going over what I assume to be the edge of the woofer. Pretty straightforward, pretty no nonsense. 350. Louie, who's been a longtime supporter of the channel, actually sent these out to me to review. So Ascend Acoustics did not send these. Louie did. Thank you, Louie. Louie's an awesome guy. Lives in Kentucky. Not going to tell you where, because if you knew Louie, you'd probably want to stalk him, because he is a salt of the earth. Wonderful man. Louie. Sent me some speakers. Thank you, Louie. All right, let's talk about some specifications, and then we're going to get into how do they sound. So these are rated in room between 53 hertz on the bottom end up to 20,000 hertz on the top end. Anechoic, it says they're rated at 58 hertz. 91 dB efficient, which means these can be driven off of something low powered like a tube amp or a low powered class A amp. Think amp camp kit, think tube amps. So you don't need that much power to get these up and running, rocking and rolling. Nominal impedance is at eight ohms and they recommend 25 watts, but 91 dB. There's a lot of speakers that are 90 dB or 91 dB that people run off of tube amps. So don't worry about that 25 watts. I think if you have a decent tube amp, a couple of watts, you can probably get these up and running. They're 12 by nine by 10. Like I said, a little bit squattier than most bookshelf speakers. And on the back, there is some threaded inserts. So you can mount it on the wall if you want to. Soundstage and imaging. I had these upstairs in a larger room. I also listened to them in my office in the near field. In the larger room, I started them out close to the wall, about 12 inches, and then I pulled them out into the room about two feet. They soundstaged in 
imaged similarly in both positions. Two feet, once you kind of get into a speaker a little bit, it opens things up and you can either move yourself or you can move the speakers more towards you. With this speaker, I'll get into it in the sound, but the bass is not super pronounced that you can't have these closer to a wall. Because a lot of times when you have a speaker really close to the wall that is rear ported, you can get a lot of room gain that muddies up the bass. As far as lateral soundstage and imaging, I use the track Chocolate Chip Trip by Tool, and if you haven't heard it, I highly recommend it. There is stuff that goes side to side and can go almost all the way around you if you have a very consistent room and you're getting the bouncy bouncies off the sidewalls. Anyway, the lateral imaging and soundstage was excellent. However, it really stopped in between the speakers. So things would go just a bit outside the speakers, but I have heard other speakers throw sound laterally way better than the Ascend Acoustics. Imaging, however, was locked on. So the width of soundstage is not this speaker's strong suit. However, depth of soundstage, forward and aft imaging, placement of people in the, well, this, this plane, very good. Give me one reason by Tracy Chapman. There was an organ and it was further behind than Tracy Chapman was. So you could feel that she was stepped forward. Organ was behind her. Very good. Let's talk about bass. So let's get this cat out of the bag. There's not much bass on this speaker. Actually, even their own measurements show it rolling off starting about 100 hertz. So when I put on Intergalactic by the Beastie Boys, which can give you an indication of how deep that song goes, one really needs a subwoofer to hear that song in all of its glory. But if you have a good bookshelf, if you have a good bookshelf speaker, then you'll get an idea of just how much bass there is on that song. These gave no indication of that. As far as texture, clarity, tone, all that good esoteric audiophile stuff, they did a very good job with Chocolate Chip Trip on the, the bass, the toms, like the biggest, lowest tom and the bass drum, which is not really that. A bass drum is really not that deep as far as frequency response. Anyway, the separation, the clarity of the bass was excellent in the upper register. So everything about 100 hertz and, and higher, the clarity and separation was remarkable as far as bass amount. This is not a bass heads speaker. The bass on this speaker reminds me a bit of the XLS Encore from GR Research. However, the Encore goes deeper. It feels like there's a lot more bass. Even though they're specced very similarly, the Encore didn't give me a sense of being thin. This does give me a sense of being thin, but conversely, the clarity and the quality of the bass is very good. Let's talk about mid-range. So this is gonna be a reoccurring theme. Give Me One Reason by Tracy Chapman. There's some drum fills in there. So we're talking about upper percussion. So not really in the bass per se, but we're moving up in the mid range. Again, very good, very snappy, remarkably clear. Her voice was not clinically clear and ultra detailed with hyper microscope. I don't even know, I'm sounding stupid now. Her voice was organic. It was clear, it seemed very natural. Lena Hall, Creep, it's her cover of the Radiohead song. Around the two minute, I believe 20 second mark, she goes way up. And when she hits that upper note, that can wreak havoc with speakers that have any resonance issues. And this speaker handled it very well. The mid range on here probably does the best job of vocals, clarity, realism as any speaker I've heard in this price category. The mid-range on this speaker is really remarkable and class leading. I don't really know what that means. It's the best mid-range I've heard out of a speaker at this price category. Lower bells and chimes, which were in Chocolate Chip Trip, again, perfect. Percussion is really good on these speakers. Let's talk about treble. Harvester of Sorrow by Metallica off of the And Justice for All. This speaker liked that song. There's a bunch of symbols and this speaker loved it. 
Some songs just love some speakers, and this speaker loved that song. One of the things about that song, though, is there's a lot of percussion going on. So again, that theme, percussion, snap, really a standout. Some of the symbols at some times, like uh, Sunday Bloody Sunday by U2. There's a lot of percussion in that song too. The beginning of that is just a snare drum. The snare drum was great, but it was some of the cymbal crashes that just seemed too much on display, too forward. Still was okay, but kind of the takeaway was that some songs love this speaker. Some songs are still good, but there's a little bit of a, I can start picking out little things. Sunday Bloody Sunday was one of those songs that the cymbals just seemed a little bit hissy. I don't know why I said hissy. It's brief or whatever. It just seemed a little bit unrealistic. So it's gonna depend upon the song. Overall, I think uh, Nina Simone, Sinnerman, excellent. But again, we have percussion at the beginning of that. Overall, I think Trouble is very good. Sometimes has a tendency to be a little bit more pronounced than it should. But again, at the price, I think the Trouble is very good. What are my final thoughts? Final thoughts on this speaker is I haven't heard a speaker in this price category that does a better job of mid-range clarity, mid-range separation, percussion, depth of soundstage, separation of instruments. It is very good and probably the best I've heard at the $350 or really sub $400 category. This speaker reminds me a lot of the KEF LS50. And it wasn't that I didn't like the KEF LS50, it's, I, there wasn't any bass. And when one is paying $1,200 or $1,300 for a speaker, it should have some bass. At $375, I can give this speaker a pass because I have plenty of money to go out and buy a subwoofer. The forward nature, the extreme separation in the mid-range is very similar to the KEF LS50. So if one is so inclined and interested in looking at the KEF LS50, you may want to consider this one if you don't have the budget. You can get four of these and a subwoofer for what you would pay for an LS50. Not a buttery speaker. So this is not going to give you warmth and mm, pull you in. This is going to give you the performance. And that performance at times can be a bit intense. The frequency response and tuning is, well, good. It, it's, it's kind of a departure from what one normally gets in this price category. If I look at the monolith, the Encores, I believe it is, those speakers are all bass and kind of muddy up the mid-range. These are all mid-range and treble and really don't have much bass. But what bass they do have is ultra clear and tonally it's excellent. Waffle by Seven Dust. If you haven't heard that song, I would highly recommend it too. Amazing. Certain songs just brought this speaker to life. And that was, mm-hmm, yeah. If you have tone controls or an EQ, you may be able to get away with not needing a subwoofer. You're not gonna get that mm, in your chest feeling from bass or lower mid-range like that from the speaker. But what you lose on that, you gain in just probably the best vocal presentation I've heard, best percussion I've heard on the speaker under $400. If you're looking for refinement, detail, depth of soundstage, and really a speaker that's different from other speakers at this price point, I would look very hard at the Ascend Acoustics. Let me see if I get it right. CBM 170 SE. No, that's not even right. No, I guess it is right. CBM. Excellent. You're probably going to need a subwoofer. You're going to want a subwoofer. Anyway, if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Tidal or Amazon. Tidal's running a special right now. Two bucks for two months, so you can try it out and see if you like it. Amazon Music is also perpetually running a special. So I think you get uh, six months of Disney Plus or some type of deal with Disney Plus, and you get to try out Amazon Music Unlimited for free. All the music is lossless or better. You can also use the affiliate links. I do not have an affiliate relationship with Ascend Acoustics. However, I will link them in the description. Most of the other links are going to be affiliate links, which means if you click and buy something through there, I will get a commission. You can also sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night we have patron only Zooms. We also have a patron only Facebook group. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu, Disney Plus. Big, however, the last episode of Boba Fett, mm, really good. No spoilers here, just watch it. Anyway, 
binge listen through your Ascend Acoustics CBM 170 SEs with a subwoofer and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man. <laughs>